Hi, I'm Tress Martinez and I'm a trainer for bus operators in the public transit industry. Before doing this, I was a driver for over 15 years. One thing that I discovered and other operators have discovered over time is that the right-hand turn is one of the most dangerous things that we encounter every single day. Some of the hazards that a driver can encounter while making a right turn are both fixed and non-fixed. You could have a car, you could have a telephone pole or a light pole that's too close to the curb. You can have moving objects such as pedestrians that will be distracted with a cell phone or maybe some headphones. You'll have bicyclists, a number of other things moving through an intersection that you've got to be aware of before, during, and after you execute that turn. So let's do this. Let's watch this video and get more into right-hand turns and how you can do them perfect every single time. Not all intersections or right turns that you'll come across can be performed in one fluid movement. This particular intersection is one of those. As you approach an intersection, your work begins before you get there. You have to be scanning the whole time. You're scanning for bikes, pedestrians, cars, fixed objects such as telephone poles and other obstacles that could get in the way. Remember, you're going to rock and roll. You want to use your mirrors the entire time. Remember that your tires should be placed to the outside edge of the left curb to allow for more room to clear the right side object. By going to the left side, it allows more space for that back right tire clear the obstacle because it's going to follow in the pathway of the tires that are in front. Notice here as the bus moves into the turn, the length of this bus at 40 feet long cannot clear both the left curb and the right curb at the same time. They're going to have to exercise pivot points. By doing so, this bus will go straight to where the driver is actually sitting on top of the curb. Right before that tire would hit the curb, move the wheels in the front to the right in order to avoid contact. You never want to make contact with your tires on a curb because it can damage the tires, it can jostle the passengers and maybe even knock a passenger over if they weren't holding on properly. As those tires move to the right, you're looking at to make sure that the right tire is now getting closer to hitting the curb. And now you want to move those wheels back straight through the intersection so that the right tire does not hit the curb. Once that's no longer an issue and that back tire will clear at that pivot point, turn the wheels to the right again to finish the navigation. You signal that you're coming to the intersection, you scan your mirrors, you rock and roll again, and you enter the intersection and bring yourself up to speed at a gradual level. At this intersection, you'll be using your four foot reference point so that you can line yourself up perfectly to make that turn. What is the four foot reference point? The four foot reference point is what you can set up for yourself on a particular bus to know that you have enough room to make a safe turn. You do so by parking the bus, measuring four feet, finding an object on that bus that lines up with the curb. Use that while you make the turn and it will never lie. For this intersection, the operator is going to use the right hand side of the windshield wiper as their four foot reference point. As with any intersection, before you get there, your work begins. You want to scan that entire area. When you come to the complete stop, you want to look to the left, to the right, and the left again. You'll pull slowly into the intersection. You never want to burst into an intersection in case somebody runs a stop sign or a red light. Watch as the operator uses a slow, safe speed while turning. The slower you go, the more room you have to make your turn. You want to use the push-pull turning method. See that the right-hand tire has now cleared the curb and you straighten the bus out. You must continue scanning and using a gentle, safe acceleration speed, safely enter the flow of traffic. While it's not a right-hand turn directly, 
Approaching the stop is one of the most dangerous and most common things that bus operators do. As you approach the stop, you want to use your right-hand turn signal to show that you'll be accessing a stop. As they get to the bus stop, they turn on their four-way flashers. This shows vehicles that you are stopped. When you're ready to enter traffic again, you want to turn your four-way flashers off and have your left-hand turn signal on to denote to traffic that you are moving back into the lane. Scan your mirrors. Slowly accelerate, rock and roll, safely enter the flow of traffic. This bus stop has a fence. It's an elevated stop that comes out from the curb into the lane of traffic. At this location with this fence that goes along the stop, you want to be careful that you don't swing out too far to where you hit the car in the left-hand lane. You also want to make sure that at the back of the bus, your tail swing does not hit a person standing at the bus stop or that fence. Watch this operator slowly leave the stop, stay in the lane, use their left-hand turn signal to show where they are, and move into the lane and continue on. Not all intersections are created equal. You're not going to have the luxury of using a four-foot reference point on this turn. The lane is too tight, the road is at a crown. This can cause your bus to lean a little bit. By doing so, it'll get it closer to any light poles or any other objects that could potentially be a hazard. Once the bus continues through the intersection, be wary of cars to the left. Be wary of bicyclists trying to get around to the right, pedestrians trying to run through to the other side not observing the proper crosswalk laws. Once you get to your pivot point, you want to slowly turn the wheel, watching that back tire to make sure it doesn't go over the curb, watching that front left bumper to make sure you don't make contact with any objects. As you accelerate into the lane, you want to do so carefully and also slowly so that you don't jostle your passengers. Remember that you are the professional operator. You have to drive safe for yourself and for the people around you that aren't doing so. You have to see things around you. And if you use these techniques that we talk about in this video, you will indeed be serious about safety. I've been a professional bus operator for 39 years. In my 39 years, I have had zero preventable accidents. You must stay focused. Safety is first. We face as many challenges every day. You have tourists into town. We have non-driving professional people driving. We have skateboards, we have wheelchairs, we have so on and so forth. Well, the only thing you can do is just stay cool and operate. Do your best train hard or work hard and make sure everything is safe. I'm Joel Mason. I've been here 39 years with no preventable accidents and you can too.